Today marks the start of hurricane season, so for me it's a time to get out all my emergency gear and test it out to make sure it's still working and viable in case there's an emergency or disaster. So this is your clue to do it too. Theory of Simple, thank you for coming to my channel today. If you're new here, my videos are all about home, car, plane, or train. I'll have you prepared for just about anything. And today, I'm going to have you prepared for being prepared. Prepared means being prepared for a lot of different situations and scenarios. So some of those things are hurricanes, floods, intense flooding, fires, it in size since it first started Saturday night, tornadoes, blizzards, and things like that. Things that I like to have on hand in my home in case the power goes out, the gas goes out, the water goes out, some disaster has caused me to be inconvenienced, and I'd like to have my family feel safe and secure, especially if we're sheltering in place. So this is my list of basics that I keep in my home. Well, because we have so many electronic devices that we use, electricity is probably one of the most important things that we rely on. If the power goes out, we need to have some way to be able to power up our devices, possibly cook, heat, run medical machines and things like that. So that is one of the first things on my mind. These are two items that I recommend everybody get and have as part of your emergency kit, which is a portable power station. And these batteries here are obviously different sizes, but they also have different wattages. And I have two of these because I have one that's smaller that we can keep by the bedside because David has to wear a CPAP and this will run it all night long as well as charge our phones. And then I have a larger one here that I use for a multitude of things, including charging laptops and computers. I'm even able to power a small refrigerator off of this, so that way I can keep things you know, cold and fresh if I need to. And then if I want to use it for something else, I'll unplug the refrigerator, plug in a microwave, plug in my hot logic, plug in my immersion heater, whatever it is I have, and be able to utilize this particular bank for a multitude of things. A smaller bank like this is okay for things like CPAPs, phones, even some computers, but if you're gonna need to run things like a small refrigerator or a microwave, this is probably what you're going to want to have, at least this wattage, which is a 1,000 watt um, power bank, and then I have a 200 watt solar panel. I have this 200 watt solar panel, and it's now hooked up. And this is what we're currently charging at. And I'm kind of blocking a tiny bit of the solar panel with my body right now. This will recharge in six hours fully with a 200 watt solar panel. This will recharge fully in about four hours with a 100 watt solar panel. And that allows me to keep things going in my household. So if you have access where you can get sun, that's what I recommend. But even if you don't have one of these, keep it charged. I use it every once in a while just to make sure that it's still working. And also don't ever let them run down to zero because sometimes they will not recharge back up. So every few months, just use it. Use it to charge your laptop or whatever. Just make sure it's working when you have an emergency or power out situation. The other great thing about these portable power stations is that they're portable. So that way, if I am asked to leave and it's not a shelter in place and they're like, you need to evacuate, I like to bring these along with me. Again, you don't know where you're going to end up. For example, in the Caldor fire a couple of years ago, I had to evacuate my parents and they came to me. But there were many people up there who didn't have friends or family to go to and the shelters were full, the hotels were full, and they ended up staying in Walmart parking lots for weeks because they had no home to go back to. So these are great things to have. Again, if you can get a solar panel, even if you're in an apartment, get a solar panel. So if you have to evacuate, you have a way once you're out to be able to get some sunlight and get yourself charged and keep some things running. They're gonna keep you comfortable, safe, and healthy. Well, this charging station right here allows me to charge several different batteries. These 18 volt batteries are great because they'll run things like lights, like this, or fans, like this. So if I need to move these things into different parts of the house or bedrooms, I have the ability to not drag this around, but this will charge all of these things for me. So working in tandem, it gives me a lot of variety to move power, light, 
fans around my home. Even a smaller inverter like this, I can take one of these batteries off, put it into an inverter like this, and then take the smaller one. And this will um, run and charge things like cell phones, computers, things like that if you need to be working. Or um, I think you can even run a CPAP off of this for a while. But these are just great additions to have so that you can move any sort of light if you need to and you need to have a working station like in a kitchen or something like that. Or you want a fan by your bed just to keep a little bit of breeze if it's really hot. These kind of things work great in tandem. If you live in an urban environment, you may not think you need a chainsaw, but we did because trees came down in our yard. We had no power. This allowed me to take down those trees. It's nice and light and easy to handle. That way, things that need to be repaired or fixed, you have some power to do those things as well. And those are always important to have as part of your emergency preparedness or disaster preparedness kit. One of the things I'd like to do is make sure that all of my equipment is either etched with an etcher or marked at least with some permanent marker that has my name on it. So if I lend my tools or my batteries or something out to somebody else, I make sure I'm getting back what I lent and it didn't accidentally get, accidentally get mixed up with some of their things and I get something back that isn't mine. So just make sure you have everything marked that's yours so that you get it all back. Of course, when the power is out, that means we need to have light in different rooms. And yes, you can plug in your lamps and things to that power bank, but I'd rather reserve that for other things that I really need, especially when you can get things that are solar powered that you can take out during the day or set sometimes up on a windowsill and get charged. For example, a little light like this, it'll just have its own little solar panel on the top. I take this with me on every single trip because it uses, I use it as a look, a little bedside lamp for me and it also changes colors. So I do like that. I can change it through different color cycles. My grandkids love playing with it. It's also, um, it's something that can be put out in the rain. It's used for camping. So if it gets wet, no big deal. It hangs, it sits up. It's really versatile. So something like that works great. Even these little outdoor lamps like this that have a little solar panel, these are great for like a kid's room or a bathroom nightlight where they just want a little bit of light. It's a little bit scary for them when things like this are happening. These can be great sources of light. Also things like these little nightlights, these are not solar powered, but they are rechargeable and they're magnetic. So you can put a little magnetic magnetic tab in the hallway. This will stick light up the floor around you or a bathroom. Um, that way, you know, when the power's out, it's completely dark. There's no ambient street light or anything coming in. These are great to have. And things like your front porch light, things like that where, you know, you're not going to have any front porch light or a step light, having something like this to help light the way works. And th this one, which is a great lamp just to take around, it has different power levels. It also has different color levels, but it will actually just open up and charge right there in the sun. And that way you can set these out during the day, let them charge, and then at night bring them in and use them as light. And that way it saves you the power from your major power bank to use for other things that are a little more important. So if the power's out, that means you're not gonna be able to use your air conditioner or any fans if they can't plug into a power source. And yes, you can use your power bank, but why use that particular source when you might need to save it for things like your computer or other things when you can get something like this, which is a solar powered fan. I charged this the other day in the sun, so it's fully charged, but now it's able to sit on the table and work on its own. And this one as well, this is an oscillating battery powered fan, which also, as you can see, is standing on the floor, but I can push this all the way down and then have it to stand up on a table as well. So these are great options to have on those brown out days when you need to get some air moving. This is great for a bedroom when you just need some air at night, or this is great for a larger area when you're just trying to get some air movement on those hot days. So thinking about having some of these things in your emergency kit are really gonna help you be more comfortable on those brown out days. For you apartment dwellers, this one comes with its own little case that allows you to put this right in here. It takes up very, very little room. This is great for an RV or a van as well. So this way you can take it wherever you need to go and have a little bit of cool air on the go.
This one is also great for camping. So if you're out camping and you just need a breeze in your camp tent or in your area, set this out in the sun. It'll run off of that, charge the battery, and allow you to use this in your tent at night because you know how stuffy you can get in those tents on those hot days. So this is a great investment, I think, just for your home, but for camping as well. This is another great option that is actually a light and a fan. It also has its own battery, so you can turn this on and have light as well as a fan here. What I like about this is you can set it on the table, but also let's say you want a dining room table to have a little bit of light and a little bit of, I'm gonna hook it up here, let me show you. Has these bendy legs and I'm just going to go ahead and put that right up here. And I can secure it pretty good. I mean, this thing is hanging pretty good off of my dining room light. I have light, has three different light brightnesses, three different fan speeds. So when you're sitting at your dining room table and the power's out and it's hot, you have a nice place to eat and be a little bit more comfortable for your meals. This also packs up really small. So this is another great one to have if you're an apartment dweller. It's a two-in-one, a great thing to have. Just as I said, keep a little bit of light, a little bit of air. Talk about getting cool without also talking about getting warm, and that's where this electric blanket comes in. I actually bought this to use car camping so that I could plug it into my power station and get warm, because sometimes all I need to do is just kind of get warm, and then this Nice fuzzy blanket will keep me warm. This has um, a couple different temperature settings and a timer. It also automatically turns off, you know, after 10 hours. But it's a great way when there's a power outage and you need to sleep and get some warmth or you're sitting around and you need to be warm, this will help get you that way. So if you have a fireplace, it's not very efficient. If you have um, a gas generator or something that can maybe blow your furnace and get that working for you, great. But this is a nice, safe, quiet option for you to have, especially for those of you who are apartment dwellers, you just need to keep warm. This is a great option to have. Another great way to heat some area up, a small area, is to have this little propane heater. This is good to use indoors or outdoors. However, when I'm using it indoors, I bought a little portable um, carbon monoxide detector so I can keep it nearby just in case something goes wrong. Um, you know, I'm just, you, you never know, just to have one of these with it. It's not going to heat your whole house, obviously, but if you have a small area like a bedroom and you just want some heat in there, this radiates quite a bit of heat. I can feel, you can see the red coming off of here. It's radiant heat, so it's going to be a nicer heat than a hot blown heat. And also, Things that heat use up your power bank fast. So if I can not use my power bank and use this, this is a great alternative. Also, it's really easy to put in the car, use in a car, use in a camper, use on a boat, wherever you're gonna be, a nice little heater to have in case you know you get those cool nights, because even in the summer sometimes those nights can get cool. It's nice to have a little heater. If you use an electric stove and oven to cook, you're not gonna be able to use it during a power outage, so you wanna have a couple of options. And for those of us who camp, we always have a couple like this. This is a butane stove that will use this. This is safe for indoors. So even if you're an apartment dweller, you can use butane to cook in your apartment. Uh, you still, if you have a window, you wanna keep things ventilated and things like that. However, you'll want to have butane and not propane. Propane like this is not safe to use indoors. You wanna use this outdoors, like on a patio or a deck or outside. So save that for this. But this is a great thing to have if you're an apartment dweller. Plus, I've actually used this on my table to do like some Korean cooking and Japanese cooking on my table right here. So I use this actually a couple of times just to do that. So if you're a camper, you probably already have this, which is a propane stove. This will allow you, to, this one has two burners. There's a lot of different ones out there, but to allow you to cook and heat water and things like that. So if you have the ability to get outside, this is what I would use to heat water. I wouldn't use my power bank. It's gonna use up too much power. Save that for other things that can't you know, be done with anything else. But this is what I would use, one of these two options. I also cook with wood. I do have a hibachi that I cook with. We sometimes use it outside when we are actually cooking outside on the table, but I also have firewood that I get from my mom and dad's property and I bring it down here so I can use it in the fireplace or I can use it in my hibachi. Great options to have. If you have those options to be outside and be able to cook or you have a fireplace, always have a stash of firewood just in case.
I also have another cooking option. I actually did a whole video on this where I cooked a whole meal in this little solar oven. That's right, it's a solar oven. And I cooked a whole meal in this, so I'll put that video link up here so that you can go ahead and take a look at it. But by leaving this outside in the sun, it's gonna take you a few hours to do it, but if you can get outside and you've got sun, why not use it to cook a meal? I can cook a meal for four in this pan, so it's a great thing to have. This is another one that I take camping a lot because I can leave it sit out in the sun, let it cook, go do my hike or whatever it is, whatever it is I'm gonna do, come back and have a nice hot meal to eat that I didn't have to use any energy except for the sun. So this is a great option to have if you have access to some sun and can cook. I need to talk about food and food preparation. Uh, I have a variety of things here. This is like a whole set of like MREs, freeze dried slash dehydrated food that are in little packets and all you have to do is add hot water to them and let them sit for a while and you can go ahead and eat these. I've taken these camping sometimes because they're light and easy to use. For apartment dwellers, this is a great thing to have because you don't have to have a lot of space for things like like this it'll get you some good nutrition and get you through also great if you need to get out to throw it in your car and just have something with you so you have something to eat other pantry staples that I keep are things like some chicken broth here and bone broth that don't have to be refrigerated um, cans of tuna and sardines chicken ramen pre-cooked things like rice and quinoa I like to have some nutritional yeast to get some great vitamins in me. These are freeze uh, dried or dehydrated potatoes. You just add water to them, hot water, and they're automatically hash browns. Some good protein, really important to have protein, so I keep some smoked salmon, some high protein pasta, and then eggs. These are actually um, dried eggs, and you can make these into scrambled eggs. Great to take camping. I take these all the time. And a way to cook some things with some ghee. This does not have to be refrigerated even once it's open. So having some of these pantry items can save you a lot of heartache, keep your family fed, keep everyone healthy. And again, this is great if they ask you to leave to have a little bit of something in your car. This is my camping refrigerator slash heater. It will allow you to keep things cold or hot. I've only really used it to keep things cold because hot's not really a problem. I can heat things up, you know, when I'm camping. But it's a great thing to have if you want to keep it in your house. You can use it as a cooler. You can plug it into something like this power station. It has a nine volt as well as AC. I use this in my car, but it'll run a little more efficiently if you plug it in here. And now this will turn on and keep your things cold. I don't know if you can hear that. There it goes. So not too bad, something you can keep in your kitchen just to keep some things cold if you need to. Especially people who are on medication, like maybe insulin that has to be kept cold. This is a great thing to have as an emergency backup if you need to keep things cold in your house or in your car. See, it's cooler, but it has a little divider in it. And I said, you can use it as hot or cold. Perfect for those emergency or car camping situations this because it's portable if I again had to leave the premises I could put this into my car I can plug it into my car as my car's running I can plug it into the cigarette lighter it'll keep it going and if I'm camping like in a Walmart parking lot or something I can plug it into this and keep it going at night as well so just a nice little handy thing to have for your car camping or emergency situations everywhere and not a drop to drink well you're gonna want a drop to drink and I always keep emergency water on hand I use these three gallon stackable water containers um, what I like about these is a I can lift them I didn't want something that I couldn't lift to get into a counter or into my car so I like these. I like how these rise up here and they're stacking and they're very stable. So I can set these in, you know, on a shelf or in the bottom of a closet and stack them up. And that way I have some fresh water to have in case something happens, which for me twice has happened where the, uh, the uh, water has gone out from either a construction issue where someone hit a water main or once someone sheared a hydrant and it was out both times for like six hours before they got it contained and then the water was clear. It came out really brown and yucky. So it was good to have that. Um, you know, if you don't want something like this, keeping big bottles of water like this are good. What I like about these is these are reusable. They're sturdy if I needed to take them out to get water somewhere, I like that. Also, if you're going to be heating water up 
Keep something like this, an insulated thermos, so you can pour the water in there. It'll keep it hot for a long time. You don't have to reheat it and use up your energy from your power station. And that way, even if it's not completely hot, at least it'll be less energy to rewarm it. And it's also great when you need to clean up to have a nice little hot or warm thing of water to get yourself all cleaned up at the end of the day. Those of you who have a gas water heater, it's gonna be great. You're probably gonna be able to get hot water. For those of you who don't and you have access to sunshine, something like this little solar shower works great. If you look at my camping video, you'll see I actually used it in the video and took a shower for you. This thing heats up really hot in the sun, didn't take long, and I'm talking hot, as in hotter than the shower that I have, like the water coming out of my hot water heater. It was, I actually had to let it cool down for a little bit. But this is great if you wanna wash dishes or you want to take a shower or bathe the kids or the dog, something like this works great. You know. Um, I just always have this with me when I'm camping. You know, if you're out at the beach, you want to rinse off your feet and you want warm water, this works great. So a little portable solar shower is always in my emergency kit. You who have access to a gas generator, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have a nice jerry can to keep some gasoline in. This is a 20 liter. It'll allow me to fill up a generator if I have it and I don't have it yet. I'm still looking for a nice, quiet gas generator to have here in my urban environment. My parents have one. It's a larger one that's actually can hook up to their propane and everything because they have quite a few power outages up at their place. They live up in the mountains. So, but having something like this, even for your car, if you want to have some gasoline and you can't get to gas stations or they're closed or their pumps aren't working because the power's out, having an extra thing of gas like this around. So that way, if you have to leave your premises because they've asked you to evacuate, it's always good to have a little bit of extra gasoline around. Last but not least, you're going to want some sort of emergency radio. One like this is great because I can charge it by solar. It also has a light here. I can also hand crank this. So if for some reason the solar goes wrong, I can hand crank it. I can also power it by plugging it into one of my power banks. It has um, wideband AM and FM radio. So if I wanna turn this on. Partly cloudy in the morning, then becoming sunny. And listen to weather or get some sort of information I can. And it also has a flashlight here with different brightness levels. So that way it's a multi-purpose, multi-use tool. It's small, easy to carry around with you. That way you can get information. For example, you might be sheltering in place and you may not have phone access that's gonna be able to get you information. You probably can get some information off of a radio like this that may tell you that you're no longer sheltering in place and you have to evacuate your home. So one of these is critical to have as part of your emergency disaster preparedness kit. Sheltered in place and everything was good, but now they've asked you to leave. They've asked you to evacuate. And that could be because of flooding, hurricane, wildfire, things that they can predict a little bit more. That happened to us a couple years ago and I had to evacuate my parents out of their home up north. They were lucky they got to come down to me. However, there were people who evacuated and in that area, there are not a lot of hotels and the shelters were full and they ended up having to stay in Walmart parking lots for a very long time. It was six weeks before people could get back to their area and many of them had their homes completely burned down so they had nothing to come back to. So it's important that you pack something that will be able to sustain you as you leave your home and this might be all you have left when you do come back. So these are important. I did a video on this bag already and I'll link that up here so you can see everything that I packed in this bag. Water is another source. I don't want to necessarily take a lot of water. I'll take a couple of those blue water containers that I showed you earlier, but you're going to want a way to be able to filter water in case you can't get to really clean water or the water has been compromised. So I have things like this little bottle and filter here. This will actually filter out 99% of bacteria and protozoa and parasites like that. I carry this with me almost on every single trip that I take. So that's something. And then something larger that I usually take camping or when I'm out car camping, which is a larger filter that you can fill up and then um, actually put a straw to this life straw thing goes through it and allow you to filter a larger amount of water. So if you have a family and you want to be able to drink, this works great. So just having some of those options if you have to leave your home. And the other thing is to have a dry bag like this, 
which has all my important documents in it, any birth certificates, passports, any IDs, contact information, it's in a waterproof dry bag. So if something happens, these bags are all pretty much waterproof, can keep everything really dry. And that way I have some ID and all of those things that are irreplaceable are in this dry bag. If you live in places that flood or have hurricanes, you're probably going to want a series of different kinds of dry bags. Things that will keep all your, your electronics, important documents and clothing dry. I have a variety of them because I've been on a boat a lot in my life and I keep a few. This one's not completely waterproof. It's not a dry bag, but it's waterproof and that's in the essence that if it got wet, it would keep it pretty dry and it rolls up. So it's another lightweight one. Um, this larger one is actually one I do use when I'm boating. It's completely, keeps everything completely dry. It's completely impermeable to water and then I also keep inside of these as extra protection some of these dry bags here that have special zippers that keep everything from documents to electronics dry I have some of them in various different sizes some of these have nice clear windows so you can put a phone in here and still use it that type of thing and this one is similar but it floats so that way if it were to fall in the water it would float and still keep your phone dry so I keep a few of these with me and utilize them whenever I'm traveling or have them in my car just for emergencies. I also say take one or two times a year to go through your things. Make sure that your power equipment still will power up and charge things. Make sure things like food isn't expired for a long amount of time. Just make sure that everything's working and take that time to be with your family and say, hey, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna practice camping for today and utilize all those things to make sure that your family knows how to use them, what to do when an emergency does strike. And so especially for kids, they don't feel so scared and out of control when something like that happens. It allows them to say, hey, yeah, we did this. We did this once when we were camping in the house. So those are great things to do for your family to keep everybody prepared for those disaster or any other type of emergency. I look at being prepared a little bit like having health insurance or car insurance. You don't want to use it if you don't have to, but you're really glad you have it when you do need it. So being prepared like this is just important for me. It just saves me a lot of heartache when you're already in a panicked or disaster situation. It's just better to be prepared. If you're not prepared, don't panic. Just find a backpack, find bags that you have in your house right now. Just start putting together some essentials that are important to you. This is for me, it could be different for everyone depending on where you live, the size of your family, you know, um, what is important medically for you. Oh, I also wanna mention, make sure you have your medication with you. So if you have prescription medication, make sure you have the whole thing with you because you may not be out of your home for just a day or two. You may be out of your home, like for some of those people, six weeks and whatever was left in their home is gone. So make sure you take all your medication with you. But like I said, just get started. Start putting a few things together. Just get a backpack, find what you have in your house now, put those things together. Watch this video, it'll help you get this bag together. If you want me to make a video of what's in here, I'll do that. Put that in the comments below so I can know that you wanna know what's in this particular go bag. And if you also wanna see a video about what I keep in my car for emergencies, I'll put that link up here because I've already done that video as well. And I also wanna know what are your things? What do you pack? What do you say, hey, you need, you forgot this. Or, you know, where I live, I need this. This is a community we share with everyone. Please put those in the comments so all of us can see what's helped you. I know in my last video on this, many of you commented who had been through disasters and had to leave. That was so appreciative. Please leave those in the comments. Let us know what you wish you had, what you're glad you had, and how all that worked out for you. So keep that in that community of comments. Really appreciate those. Now, there's a lot of stuff that went through this video and I went through it very fast because I didn't wanna make a three hour video out of this. However, I will link everything that I can in the video description below. I also will have an Amazon storefront that will list all of these things in one place so that you can go and get a bunch of stuff, but the links will be if you just wanna get one or two items that you think are really kind of cool, to get those for your emergency preparedness kit, those will be linked in the video description. Hey, I am working on the video right now, but I wanted to let you know that I'm working with EBL to get you guys a great discount for the 1000 watt power station and the 200 watt solar panels. So right now, if you use the link in the video description, you're gonna get $310 off the 1000 watt 
power station and you're going to get $70 off the 200 watt solar panels. These are great deals, especially since Father's Day is coming up, graduations are coming up, and something for you to get your emergency preparedness kit ready. So make sure you visit those links, get those deals, and get yourself prepared. I hope you got some great hacks from this video to help you get a little bit more prepared in case there is a disaster or some emergency where you need to shelter in place or maybe even leave your shelter. If you did, remember to please give this video a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, leave me a comment and also hit the subscribe button because that's going to help me grow my channel. Until the next time, remember to juice life, drink the joy, keep life simple, be prepared. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Glad I turned that on on an 80 degree day. I can see the sweat beating up on my forehead already. Actually, ouch, that pinched me. Here is going to, it's upside down. It's upside down. Let me put it right side up so you can actually see the thing. Unlock it, lock it, lock it, unlock it. Okay. I just lost the remote. Here, where are you? Come out. <laughs>